As you evaluate what you saw on Sunday and where this team sits now <laughs> at three and five, what are your thoughts? Yeah, well, I, so let's let's just be very clear with the the nuance of the evaluation of this team, right? I think we're all in agreement that Justin Fields' long term development is more meaningful for the rest of this you know ten weeks than anything that happens in the win loss column. That said, it's not okay to just say, "Oh, it doesn't matter what happens on the field," because some of the things that happened defensively on Sunday were incredibly troubling. And if you are now in a situation where you've got People in the outside world saying, hey, you may need to blow out your coaching staff. You may need to redo your front office. You may need to now rebuild your entire defense. You have no really top-tier playmakers on offense, but everything's fine because Justin Fields made two remarkable plays. Then I think we're looking at this through the, long, the wrong lens, right? And, Tommy, you and I exchanged texts off the air about how uh, in the assessment of Justin Fields, there are two sections to the, to the viewing booths, right? And there's one that's a pants-optional section yep. and there's one that's the pants required section and you and i are in agreement that we are going to stay in the pants required section in our assessment of i'm Justin willing Fields. to take my pants off as soon as i can but i'm there for the moment <laughs> Wait, I'm is this off. why i wasn't in like a lot of times you'll just text me or a lot of times you'll put waddle and me in the text i was omitted here is this because i'm in the pants off category no i don't know i i, I was actually going to you look ask like you have you, pants on to me today i do i was going to ask you whether you feel like you're which which, which booth that you wanted to choose i this was not directed at you. It was just generally, I felt the vibe on Monday. You referenced me going and other people on Twitter, a vibe that all was well in the world because Justin Fields had an above average performance against a sub 500 opponent at home. And, and everyone was like, Oh, everything's great. And, and, and I just, I couldn't, wrap my brains around that confusion so which which booth are you it, lining up for you're saying for, that like it's like kevin bacon in animal house saying all is well all is well <laughs> and every, like and that's a really old reference but well, it's right in my alley but it, yeah it is um no but uh, answer the question you're buying a ticket we're, and, we're, and there's you're, nuance you're wearing here. your pants or no pants i am i am, I am uh i am going uh <laughs> no pants with boxers that are not too revealing, you know, that, that, that you could even be disguised as bicycle pants or whatever they are. Here's why. Let me give you a little nuance here. Yeah. I, I know everything is not well. We know this franchise is in a lot of trouble. We have an aging defense with still an offensive line that can't support them, a play caller who can't call plays, a head coach who is better to be out of here, a general manager who has one winning season in his seven years here, a team president who has constantly hired the wrong guy. So as I know, I have always said they need to start it at the top, they need to cut off the head, uh, and they need to get to the true reason why this organization is sick. That being said, knowing that all is not well, I still have to live with this team not well. And if I can get the quarterback position right, I have a better chance of getting right when they do decide to get well. So if my quarterback, after that horrible game against Tampa, can have some moments where I want to take off my pants, that's pr pretty good. <laughs> you are you are geared up and ready to. Re they're like those those uh, basketball sweats that you pull off. Right. Oh, my rip away pants. Yeah, rip away the pants. rip away pants. Yeah. yeah. I okay. was like again, I like I know what I've got down there. Not pretty. Not pretty. Not pretty at all. <laughs> Not gonna be impressive. Um but But you're still willing to show I'm, it to the world I'm still in celebration. To say, <laughs> yeah. here, here I am. Yeah, I'm here I, for the I, pants I, party. I just like I just worry that there are too many people that are so thirsty for success that there is this like premature urge to crown a guy a star when there's still about five more steps to get up to that level, right? Like there's a difference between a special play and a special performance. And there's a difference between a special performance and being a special player, right? And so it, it's like, you know, remember Frogger, that old game? If you tried to skip two, two lanes, you, you get hit by a truck or you land in the, the water. That's probably a terrible analogy. But you know what I'm saying, right? You can't get from point A to point D with one you know, fourth down and one run that is really, it was super exciting. And I will tell you that that Soldier Field was as alive in that moment as it's been in a while, right? Is, and isn't, that this the, isn't this the nature of the beast, though? This is what we live with in 2021, because I would say this as well. 
there's equally a group out there that wants to tell you that he's no good and he's going to be <laughs> Mitch and swings hard to the other side of the equation, yes. which is ridiculous as well. It may, may become reality, God forbid, but there's no way of determining who anybody is going to be with with the limitations he has right now with what's around him in all capa- all aspects of it. There's just no way I think anybody well, anybody can come to whatever conclusion they want. But I just think people careen from one extreme to the next, and it's just the environment we live in. Well, yeah, I think you're right on that. I think that the extremists on both sides then sort of have magnets that pull you to whichever extreme you're leaning towards, right? And then you're just trying to, to basically shout over the backlash from the opposite extreme. And then it just gets dangerous and the conversation gets muddled. Yeah. My point was that on Sunday afternoon, like some people made this out to be like this was, you know, uh, oh, well, they lost, but, you know, they hung with the 85 Bears defense and, and they just barely got edged at the end. This was a winnable home game against an opponent that hadn't won in 42 days, and you had the ball in the fourth quarter with multiple chances to win that game. You scored two touchdowns the entire game. You lost by 11 points. Your quarterback didn't get to 200 yards passing for the eighth consecutive game. And so just like in the pants up section, we're just going to call those things out as being like, okay, yes, there were some really, really encouraging plays. I thought Justin, I thought his footwork was great. I thought he was in rhythm all day. I thought he looked more comfortable Sunday than he's looked at any point this year. All came Those are out all quick. positive things. But, like, let's – yeah, right. It, decisive, right? There was The yeah. ball came out or it was – okay, I need to run, and I'm taking off right now, and I know when to get down on the run. All those things, they, they were encouraging. Well, now let's string that together for three, four, five, six weeks, and maybe we can have this discussion in early December that, okay, yes, this growth and this development is clearly on the right track rather than just becoming so intoxicated by two really good highlight reel plays that we lose the discussion in the excitement. Look, Dan, hope is a powerful thing. Yes. And, and these fans, you know Bears fans and how they commit their time and energy and money to this product. And they just want something to grab a hold of. And based no problem. On, and based on seeing what Justin Fields did in his two years at a major college, they think he can be good. And then when there are these flash plays, and I would disagree with you that there's more way more than just that one run in that game. There were a few throws, a few plays. That, yeah, a few. That, a few, a right? Few, like, right. right. Now, look, and, and, and if this is year three and this is all we're getting, I'm, oh no. But I think we're all just wanting something because we're I'm, so I'm down cool and we've that. been kicked multiple times. We just want it so badly so we're not going to be picky at this point. I have no problem with that. I'm, all I'm saying is don't jump three steps ahead. And it felt like Sunday's game was one where people were willing to jump three steps ahead despite a very dispiriting loss at home, right? Like, that's a football game that you should win if you have the culture and the character and the competitiveness and all these other things that you claim to have in the building. And so it, it, it's too much for me to get so enamored by flashes of a quarterback that you ignore the idea that, oh, my God, this defense can't stop the run anymore, right? And, all my, oh, my God, our offense scores two touchdowns and we're satisfied. Why, why are you we're satisfied? Not, no. We, we, we know, know the they got to get rid of it's, everybody. It's the difference between the 30,000-foot view and the 10,000-foot view because if you're somebody that is looking at this and realizing that this team is not going to compete for anything and yeah. the quarterback is the most important commodity that they have and you see progress – you're willing to undo a couple of snaps and get ready to rip them all the way off. And, and I get that. I just bristle against both extremes. Like, I just want to be patient and watch the kid make, make the progress that we saw. I'm with you. I, I saw, I saw him go through progressions. I saw the ball come out. I think you saw, I think, and I think it was the word Sylvie used yesterday and you just use it. Like, you know, he was committed to things. He was committed to running the ball. He was committed to getting decisive. the ball out. Decisive with his decisions and, and that's progress. And I think that's a really good thing. Do I think that, you know, I'm, I mean, look, um, I, I don't think he's going to win the MVP this year, but that's not the goal. I think if there's anything from Sunday's game that you want to sort of gauge in this Pittsburgh game coming forward is, is does what he did with his legs sort of slow down the way opposing defenses come after him with a pass rush? And does that then allow him to be more comfortable in the pocket, be able to do things with a pass in the pocket that are predicated on the danger he presents with his legs? And can you as an offense 
build off that going forward. And that's where the Bears need to build and grow from here. It's where Fields needs to take the next step in his, his development. And, and I'm all for the hope, and I'm all for the excitement, and I'm all for, for calling out how encouraging the performance was on Sunday. I just want to make sure that we don't... Unsnap a few buttons. Just see, give yourself a break. Unsnap a few buttons.